Hello, and welcome to a special report on the flight test of the ED-1, the first rover for the EDB Aerospace Division flying out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. And the ED-1 began as a pet project of an intern who wanted to demonstrate that he was ready for bigger and better things. And, and frankly, the, the pros at the Aerospace Division uh, laughed it off. Uh, noting that uh, there were some serious flaws in this design as you can see here perhaps those of you who are more aerodynamically inclined can see these initial flaws this was the initial test and we see the rover currently uh, trying out its rover capabilities before taking flight and uh, but we will see the final product as it eventually became very critical as we wanted to test out uh, where the Kraken might lurk around Vandenberg Air Force Base so Eventually this pet project became an essential project uh, in order to uh, feel out where the Kraken might lurk before launching our planes and perhaps lead them, leading them to their demise. So far the rover capabilities are good. You can see the wings folded back there. There are also... Uh, oh. And uh, here we see on the first uh, test of its rover capabilities it has already discovered uh, what the people at base are calling a positive Kraken that is a, uh, a Kraken that actually lifts above the surface of, uh, of the ground and uh, so we see it uh, apparently hovering above the ground here in fact that is a a positive Kraken according to the according to the terminology being developed here and of course a negative Kraken would be a Kraken that sucks it below the ground and that tends to have more more destructive effects but uh, so far, the rover capabilities seem to be all right. Though uh, the ED-1 has not uh, encountered any steep slopes. A word on the on the designation: the DBs are the aircraft, and the EDs are the rovers. Uh, they are two different divisions. The Aerospace Division has the Aircraft Division and the Rover Division and the uh, EDs are exclusively for the aircraft, DBs are for the rovers and and the human occupants of uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base have taken to calling the EDs the Eddies and the DBs the Debbies so the aircraft are all uh, referred to as for instance Debbie 1, Debbie 2, Debbie 3 and uh, this rover would have been Eddy 1 so that is a, a valid way to refer to them as far as uh, the denizens of Vandenberg Air Force Base are concerned. And here we see the, the ED-1 uh, taking to the runway, preparing for its first flight. And again, uh, those of you who know a bit about aerodynamics will already see the flaw in the intern's design. It took him a while to figure it out though. Uh, here we see the landing gear being lowered because the the takeoffs and landing speed for the rover is greater than the rover wheels can sustain. And also it serves to lift the craft up so that the folding propeller can extend fully. And you see the folding propeller unwinding there and so now it is ready for flight here. Wings are out. Those are electric propellers. The blue body contains the battery for the propellers as we see it winding up. And the little green tanks on the side are actually life support tanks and you can see two seats for Kerbals on the top of the platform there at the top of the rover. So this can carry two, two Kerbals. And here we see the, the big problem with the, with the ED-1 in its uh, first incarnation. Uh, clearly it had trouble staying on the runway. Uh, there was a bit of negative crack in there, but uh, not entirely sure. Certainly can't blame the Kraken for the failure of this rover. It was uh, quite pronouncedly tipping over. And so there's the second flight, and instead of uh, testing this rover capabilities first, uh, they decided to go with the flight test immediately. And so here we see here the landing gear down, uh, the, the order of operations is uh, landing gear down, wings unfolded, uh, propeller out, and then propeller ignition. Obviously this is all remote controlled, not uh, not risking any kerbals on, uh, on a project like this. 
And of course, uh, the Kerbals are wary of anything to do with Krakens. So here again... There was a definite inability to get the plane up at its prescribed takeoff speed, and that was the first problem. The second problem was, of course, as you can see again, keeping it on the runway. Again, no way to blame the Kraken on that one. The plucky intern was very persistent, uh, despite all the all the humor from his uh, elders. Uh, they they were merciless in in their response to his uh, flight testing. Of course, they didn't bother to tell him what was wrong with the design, hoping that he would figure it out for himself. But uh, one of the effects of uh, of getting uh, such ribbing from one's cohorts is it makes a person very stubborn. And so the intern, instead of trying to fix his design, kept insisting that it would work as he had designed it in the first place. Unfortunately, uh, that that was not the case, as uh, we will see this thing fail in pretty much exactly the same way as it did the first two times. The intern does try his best to uh, keep it to the runway, but but he still has the problem where he can't lift it up. It is at its takeoff speed. It simply cannot bring the nose up. And so he eventually runs out of runway. Uh, you can see him uh, desperately trying to get it up, but uh, to no avail. And... Yes. So finally this rover became essential for Kraken testing. And so the pros at the base uh, finally stepped in and uh, hoping that the the young intern went below their entire budget, uh, decided to finally fix it up. And you can see the control surfaces here, the canards and two rudders. And uh, important to note that uh, because the wings have been moved further back, they don't fold quite as well as the initial design. They do not fold fully back. They have to be at a slight angle. Uh, but here we go. We'll see whether the pros at the base Oh, uh, at first they're testing out the... There you go, you can see the angle to which the wings can fold back. But now the pros are going to show the intern how it's done. Landing gear down. Wings unfolded. Oh, uh, an important note, the order of operations for this version Sites that the wings have to be unfolded first, then the landing gear lowered, and that's because of the center of gravity. If the wings are folded back when the landing gear is lowered, then the, the rover will actually tip back because the center of mass is too far back. So wings unfolded first. And so here we go, the first test of this version of the rover. No change in the name of it since the first version that the intern had there uh, did not work out. And we see it does take off. Successful takeoff. And attempting to touch down though. Uh, get a little bit of a flaw there. The narrowness of the wheelbase on the landing gear caused a bit of a difficulty. And so that led to a change in the in the landing posture in that as long as it was slow enough for the rover wheels to sustain it was decided that the the landing gear would be retracted on touchdown and the rover wheels would then take, take over and that will ensure of course that the wider wheelbase of the rover wheels would be able to keep the craft stable and here we see the next takeoff the next test of the ED1 And a very quick takeoff. This didn't take uh, too long to get this off the ground this time. And this time they were going for a real, a real run, which means uh, going around the base and then coming back for a landing. 
one thing that was discovered was that uh, a resource that was required for these particular engines called FS coolant uh, depleted quite rapidly and that FS coolant did not uh, replenish so uh, there are problems there and that limits the lifetime of this in flight to to only a few minutes, only a couple of minutes so there was no way to uh, take it out over the ocean and do a full test of it it could only make a ring around the base and then come back down though we can see that if this was deployed on uh, some some planet with uh, similar gravity to Earth and uh, similar atmosphere that uh, it would still be quite handy to be able to hop over large obstacles. There is a little bit of uh, jitteriness in control as not only is it remotely controlled which makes it a little bit more difficult but also it is uh, very maneuverable. It's very lightweight design. Despite needing both of its propellers, by the way, uh, it does need both engines in order to fly. Having two engines, though, does serve to shorten its takeoff runs, so that is helpful. So here it is, uh, giving itself some distance from the one runway in order to make the landing. And it is only going for a minimal distance, so we will not see the elegant touchdown that we uh, normally see from aircraft from the EDB. As it turns around here, you can see it's quite high. The rover division is admittedly not quite as good at flying things as the aircraft division. Uh, it has no actual pilots. Uh, you can think of it as the drone division as well. Uh, it uh, specializes in operating the camera drones, uh, one of which is of course following this particular rover. And so the approach is high, but they continue to make the attempt at landing despite that. Again, the lifetime of the of the engines being an issue here, it's unlikely that it would have been able to make a second go around. And being a rover, uh, if it did miss the runway, there was some hope that it would still survive if it uh, touched down further on, though there is still the Kraken issue. So it's all lined up, and the question is whether it can stop in time now. touchdown and you can see the landing gear immediately retracts so that the rover wheels take over adding to stability instead of allowing it to tip over and braking and it has plenty of room to come to a full stop and we'll see it do that it will come to a full stop before then continuing on its uh, rover-like duties, uh, making a little tour of the runway and uh, probing the surrounding area for more Kraken sign. Okay, full stop. Uh, in a fairly short distance, engines are off. And here it was noted that the folding propeller would have clipped the ground given more rugged terrain and so the decision to retract the landing gear and use the rover wheels on landing might have to be reviewed as will the the folding of the wings it looks like there is some issue with the folding propeller and the wings there but for now the the ED1 continued on its rover like duties uh, taking a tour of of base checking out for Kraken sign the runway itself seems to be fairly safe but as it dips off we see a positive Kraken in this area. The EDB is not too worried about positive Kraken though. Turns around and heads for base. Still experiencing a positive Kraken here. There is some debate about what to do about Kraken and uh, whether the goal should be to avoid them 
to appease them in some way. Uh, certainly there is less fear of the positive Kraken than the negative one. The scientists have uh, thankfully uh, prevented this from getting all theological, but they do hypothesize that the, there is a possibility to perhaps befriend the positive Kraken in some way so that it could uh, defeat the negative Kraken and somehow balance it out. Uh, there is there's also some debate about what kind of approach to use given the Krakens. Uh, perhaps uh, the two Krakens will be made to fight or uh, combine in some way. Uh, still positive Kraken for most of the base area here. The rover uh, seems to handle slopes fairly well. So that's positive. It is uh, traveling at a fairly good pace. Uh, really at the limits of its uh, of its rover engines. Now this is interesting. With the huge uh, crawlers that are made to bring the rocket to launch pad, you don't see too much of the positive Kraken. But uh, here we see that the rover itself uh, seems to experience it and then hits some sort of wall right when it comes to the launch pad and it cannot pass that wall. So that was very strange. Very strange effect right there. Does not seem to affect our rocket crawlers, but uh, certainly affected the rover. So we will have to be wary of uh, sending anything small up the up the ramp there. Perhaps uh, Kraken, or at least the Kraken ramp base, are uh, less willing to uh, tangle with larger larger vehicles. That's a hypothesis being thrown around at Mission Control these days. So lots of, uh, lots of discoveries being made by this rover about the Kraken, as it uh, continues to be quite resilient on the slopes. We're not sure whether uh, its resiliency is actually because of the beneficence of the positive Kraken, or because it actually handles slopes very well. Oddly, there is no apparent debate among the Kerbals that the Kraken or Krakens are actual uh, living things with a consciousness. Uh, not entirely sure why that is, and the humans at Vandenberg Air Force Base are completely befuddled by this approach. But it wouldn't be the first thing about Kerbals that have befuddled humans, so we'll let the Kerbals be. Certainly this is an interesting phenomenon, possibly with some applications in uh, maglev technology. Not entirely sure about that, but uh, hopefully the Kerbal scientists will be able to figure something out. But uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching this coverage of the flight test of the ED-1, the first rover for the EDB Aerospace Division, uh, designed for multiple purposes. And uh, we hope you will join us for further flight tests. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.